Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie Mandy. And I'm here with somebody. Help me remember who. <laughs> dun dun dun. Today's oh video goodness. is all about amnesia. <laughs> Apparently, one of us finds people's mental well-being hilarious. I am finding your intro hilarious. <laughs> Whatever you're doing there, it's interesting. Yes, like Mandy said, today is all about amnesia, so we're going to give you amnesia rex. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are still doing our Road to 1K giveaway. Our next giveaway is at 7.50. So Mandy, what's going on then? You do not want to miss out on Nine Minutes by Beth Flynn. This is the book we'll give away when we get to 750. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram for an extra like. And this is part of our Road to 1K giveaway. So we have lots of more fun giveaways coming. So you're going to want to stick around to this channel. Exactly. Not only are we hilarious, but we have free books. <laughs> and and fantastic recommendations. Yeah, I think so. The closer we get to a thousand, the more it's going to be given away. So you guys want to make sure that you're subscribed and you're here for that. All right. So let's talk amnesia. Mandy is a freak for amnesia romances. She loves them. Don't you? I do enjoy a good one. Yeah, she likes them a lot. I, I like them too. Um, but this is one that you devour if you can find good ones. Well, I read this book. I got uh -huh. kind of hooked on it. Uh huh. I would love to find another one kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So since you um, love it so much, why don't you get started for us and give us your first. Why, Jessica? I would love to. Okay. Let me just rearrange my desk here. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I will start off by talking about my very favorite one, Help Me Remember by Corinne Michaels. We recently met Corinne Michaels and I was like, oh my God, I loved Help Me Remember. And then <clears throat> she started talking to me about it. It was very exciting. But <laughs> I love this book. So this is about Brielle who wakes up in the hospital and has lost the last, I don't know, I don't think I wrote down the specific amount of time, but she has lost the last few years of her life and she wakes up and doesn't know that she is the only witness to the crime of her brother being murdered. And so she not only wakes up having lost the last three years of her life, I think it was three, she has also lost her brother. And so there's, she feels this immense like guilt that her brother is dead and she's the only witness to the crime but yet she remembers nothing and she also still thinks that she is with a previous boyfriend that she is no longer with and hasn't been with for some time so spencer is one of her brother's friends and he is an investigative reporter. And so one thing that they tell her is they don't want anybody giving her any information about her life. They want her memories to come back authentically. So that will give them a better chance of catching whoever murdered her brother. So Spencer, investigative reporter, one of her brother's very good friends, agrees to help her try and piece together some things. And so they start spending a lot of time together. And Brielle starts to think, hmm, I don't know if I want to remember my previous, you know, few years here. So I'm really starting to kind of fall for Spencer. And then she finds her engagement ring in her apartment. And she has no idea who gave it to her. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I love this. Loved it so much. It's one of the only Corinne Michaels I haven't read yet. You should get on it. At some point. I have that same book you do. At some point I will. You Just gave this book to me. I know because I ended up with two copies. So beautiful. Well, you just took away your niceness there. You should have been like, yes, I knew you would love it. I did know that you loved it. That's why you got it. That's why I didn't put it at my Pango bookstore. That's why you got Thank it. You. You're welcome. You're so welcome. All right. While Mandy lovingly caresses her book, we're going to talk about my first read. <laughs> so uh, my first one, this is a historical. 
So this is called um, The Rogue of Islay Isle. It's by Heather McCullum. Um, so this is about Cullen and Rose. So Cullen is the leader of his clan. He is the laird of his clan. Re reluctantly, his father just passed and that's kind of his job now. And so he's on this little aisle and he is uh, doing his thing, taking care of, you know, his clan. He's a bit of a rogue, obviously, as you can tell by the title. But uh, one night there's a big storm and they can tell that they're, they can see that there's a ship right off the coast. And uh, the next morning they go out to see, make sure everything is cool after the storm. And they find a woman has washed up on the beach. And this is who he refers to as Rose. When she comes to, she has no memory of who she is, but she can't talk either. There is a mark around her neck where it looks like someone had a rope tied around her neck. And so they're not sure if she's uh, like a captive that has escaped. They're not sure if she was supposed to be going to the gallows. Like they don't know who this is. Uh, she seems very sweet and kind, but they just don't know where did she come from? Why does she have these injuries? So she's not able to speak and she doesn't know who she is. So Colin, call, Colin calls her Rose and this is their story. And you just got to read it to see how that plays out. So I am ill and we're bulk recording. So if somebody's watching this, they're like, wow, Mandy's been sick for a while. It's because we bulk recorded. <laughs> but every time I cough, I've been muting myself. And every time I cough, my computer flashes across Mike is muted. <laughs> it just really wants you to know that if yes. you want them to hear you coughing and blowing your nose, your no. mic is muted. Nobody, nobody wants to hear that. Nobody needs to see that. No. Okay, okay, what's your next book? <clears throat> my next book is another one of my favorite amnesia <laughs> books. Actually, it's probably what I just really enjoy this one. Yeah. Overall, not necessarily just for the amnesia aspect. So this is called Repeat by Kylie Scott. And I do oh, I remember this one. <laughs> yes, it's good. I do remember this is on Audible. So if you're one who likes to listen to audio, this is a good read for that. So this is about Clementine and she was viciously attacked and she has no memory of what happened to her. And she also doesn't remember several years of her life and she's trying to piece it back together. And I remember kind of questioning this a little bit when I was reading the story, but I just went with it. She doesn't really seem to have a lot of close friends for whatever reason, and her and her sister are not close. So there's nobody who can really fill in a lot of the gaps for her. And so she finds out that Ed, who runs this tattoo shop, was her ex, but she has no idea why they broke up. So she's like, well, if I go talk to him, maybe he'll give me some information. And she goes to the tattoo shop and walks in. And remember, she has no idea who she's looking at. Like, nothing is familiar to her. And this guy stands up and basically tells her to get that beep out of the tattoo shop. And she's like, but wait, I don't understand. And he's like, what kind of beep <laughs> games are you trying to play with me? And he gets pretty irate with her because she broke his heart. But she has no memory of this at all. And he still has feelings for her, even though he, like, really has a lot of frustration, I guess, anger towards her because she, of how she broke up with him, basically, and kind of just left him. And he was devastated. And so he reluctantly agrees to help her kind of start piecing some stuff back together. Yeah, that was a good one. It Remember was. the audio was good, too. It was, yes. Yeah. I think I listened to it, too. Yeah. Um, so this next book I have is another one that you and I both like as well. Ooh. So this is Broken Wings by Izzy Sweet yes. and Sean Moriarty. I would love this one. So this, this is, is an MC. Uh-huh. This is good. So this is an MC romance. This is about Allie and Koi. So when the book starts out, Allie and Koi are young teenagers in love. Koi is a part of this motorcycle club. And um, they are, you know, they've, they've been together. Her parents do not approve of him at all. And they don't approve of the relationship, but they're in love. They're going to make it happen. And so we see Allie is, something happens to Allie. And she wakes up in a hospital and she has no memory of the past. I think it's like three years is what, what happens here. So she wakes up in a hospital, no memory. And she's pregnant. 
And then we fast forward about five years later and her parents have passed away. And so she goes back to what the town that she lived in before they moved because they, they leave town at this point. Um, and so she goes back to this town. And when she's there, she has a run in with the um, motorcycle club. And when she does, Koi is there and Koi sees the little boy and he's like, uh huh, that's mine. You're mine. And he's been looking for her. It's actually five years. There's five years. Yeah. Five years since she wakes up. He's been looking for her those whole five years, like hired investigators. He wants to know where she is and what's been going on. Like, where'd she go? Cause to him, she just up and disappeared. So, um, I loved it. I loved this story so much as did you. I did. Mm -hmm. I loved it a lot. Loved it a lot. Plus it's a gritty MC. You gotta have a gritty MC. MC needs to be gritty period. I also really love the next book I'm going to talk about. Tell me all about it. It's Asher by Carrie Ann Cole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, too. I, yeah. Have you read all the books mm -hmm. in that series? Mm -hmm. No. Wait, all all except for, all except for, was it Lucas? The reverse yeah. HF one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to get to Asher's book. Yes. Yeah. So... Asher's book can be read as a standalone if you really want to betray yourself. <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> read the whole series. No, in all seriousness, you can read it as a standalone, but it may not make as much sense or might not be as enjoyable if you read the whole series. But the whole series by Carrie Ann Cole, Ashes and Embers, is fantastic. So do yourself a favor and read the whole series, and then you'll have quite the amnesia treat at the end. So this is about Asher and Ember. And Ember has been in a coma for the last eight years. And while Asher has continued on with his rock group, he has remained extremely devoted to Ember, much to everybody else being like, uh, maybe you need to let her go. Like, it's been a long time. It's been years. Like, let her go. And he refuses to do that. And he is faithful and he is loyal to her. And she wakes up. So just imagine like being faithful, loyal to somebody for eight years while they're in a coma. And they wake up and have no idea who you are or who they are. And she doesn't just have missing pieces. Like she is missing most of her life. Like she doesn't know who he is. She doesn't even know if like what her favorite food is like she's missing pretty much everything which makes it very difficult for asher because she's not the person that he fell in love with that he's been pining after for eight years so it really adds a lot of angst and struggle and just um really tugs at those heartstrings throughout this story while you watch her try and discover who she is and him trying to come to grips with that maybe the woman that he's loved all this time isn't coming back to him. Mm -hmm. It was so good, too. Because, I mean, like you said, like, yes. we see him pining for her throughout many books. So that whole series. And even when you read Torn and Tide, like, you see it there. Like, you see it in mm -hmm. Lucky's book. Like, he, we see it through all of these books that yes. are in that universe and then finally you get the oh my gosh she's awake but now she has amnesia mm -hmm. so yeah yep yeah. okay so my next rec is one of my favorite firefighter recommendations so this is sparking sarah by samantha christie there's three books in this series they're all amazing but this is the second book and this is about sarah in denver so sarah is in a car accident and she's on a bridge and the car is like hanging off the bridge and denver is one of the firefighters that gets brought in or is on call and gets sent to the accident and he has this thing about clamming up when he sees accidents because he has some trauma from his past and so he gets in the car he has to actually go through the rear of the car to try to get her stabilized so they can get her out without this car falling off into the bridge and when he does that because they have her in the neck brace because they're trying to stabilize or holding her neck or whatever all she can see is in her rear view mirror she can only see his eyes and as long as he's keeping eye contact with her then he can do his job um and so that that's all she can see 
is just his eyes. And so when she gets out of the car, she's, she's like that. She's gone. She's, she's out of it. And they take her to the hospital. She's put in the ICU. Denver finds out that she has no family except for a cousin who has a bunch of little ones at home. So the cousin isn't able to be at the hospital with her. So she's basically alone in a coma in the ICU. And so he starts going to the hospital and staying with her when he is not at work so that somebody is there with her for when she wakes up. And then when she wakes up, she has no recollection of the last several years. She doesn't know who he is, but all she knows is his eyes. And there's something about his eyes that are so comforting to her and uh, makes her feel safe. And so things go from there. I need to read that. Yeah, you do. I knew you would say that because I mean, this is one that you haven't read yet. I know. The problem is, is I have like a gazillion books on my Kindle. All mm -hmm. the books that we brought home from Logan, Vogue, ugh, plus Love in Vegas. Plus Plus all the other books that I own that I haven't read yet. It's, it's a problem. problem. It's a real problem. Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. So my next Amnesia book is another one of my all-time favorite books, and that's Ruined Secrets by Neva Altai. Love this whole series. So you can good. definitely read this by itself, but like try this. If you like it, then go read the whole series, or if you think you might like the series, start at the beginning and read through. It is fantastic. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So this is about Isabel, who has been in love with Luca since she was seven. Luca is significantly older than her, and her grandpa on his deathbed does an arranged marriage for her to marry Luca. And Luca knows that he has to get married. He understands why he needs to marry her, and he agrees to it, but he doesn't want to because she's I think she's only like 19 and so he's like I don't want to be married to a teenager and then he's like she he's like feels somewhat attracted to her which grosses him out because he's like she's only a teenager so his idea on how to deal with all of this is just to be super cold and kind of indifferent to her as they're married and she's devastated because she's been in love with him so getting to marry him was like her dream come true and then he treats her this way well, Luca gets in an accident, wakes up, and has no recollection. So she tells him, we're married, you love me so much. <laughs> and she is able to feed him information along with his brother so that he is able to continue to rule and nobody knows because they need to protect him. If anybody finds out that he doesn't remember these things, he's, you know, people are going to try and take him out. And so they work together to try and help him all while she's telling him we're madly in love. So mm -hmm. I, I love loved it. it. The balls on that girl. I loved it where she's like, all right. Yeah. We're in love. You can't live without me. Let yeah. me help you. I mean, kudos to her. <laughs> so yeah, it was good. It was good. She does worry a little bit that if he remembers that uh -huh. he's going to be pretty pissed, but she yeah. just loves him so much. She's like, this is my chance. Exactly. And I love that. I love that for her. And I just, I, yeah, I love that whole series so much. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of series that we love, <laughs> Mandy's like, how is she going to fit this in here? I got an ice planet for Marion book. Oh my gosh. There's we, amnesia in this too. Speaking of series we love, it would be speaking of a series you love. That's what I meant. Speaking of series I love. Okay. I, yeah. Shush. Let me just tell them about it. The blue appendage guy. That's right. Forgets <laughs> who he is and Look. wakes up totally freaked out that certain parts of his body are blue. No, because no, no. Um, this is, I can't remember what number this one is. It doesn't actually say. Well, yeah, that's an good. idea for Ruby Dixon. That could be a number one bestseller. 
<laughs> nice try. Nice try. Okay. So this is um, Barbarian's Heart. This is a part of the Ice Planet Barbarians. And I think this is like book 10 or something. This is, we're, we're getting into it now. Um, if you've read all of the Ice Planet Barbarian books, I just got to tell you that this one, which is the newest release, which is Saving Scar, is a part of her Ice Clone spinoff. And it also has a heroine who has amnesia in it. But we're going to talk about this first one because you really should get through all of these before you get to that one. So we're going to talk about this one. So this is the story of Stacy and Pasha. So Stacy is our human who has been taken, you know, abducted by aliens and ended up on the ice planet. And when they first get there, she resonates immediately to Pashov. And she is one of the girls who has taken this whole situation in stride. And she has just made the, the best of it that she can. She immediately got a mate when she got there, um, when she got her little, her cootie, her little symbiont. And so she's been living her best life for the last two and a half years. She's technically married because she has her mate and she has a little baby boy. Well, there is... Um, an occurrence that happens, there's a novella just before this book. So if you really want to know what happens and you read the novella, otherwise you can just start with this book. But there is an earthquake that happens on the ice planet. And when that happens, the cave, the, the cave system they're all living in collapses and Pashov hits his head. So when he wakes up, he does not remember anything. I mean, he remembers being young. He knows his parents because his parents are still alive here and he knows his siblings, but he does not remember Stacy. He does not remember their baby. Um, he does not remember the women crash landing on the planet. So he has completely forgotten that. So here you have a young mom who is, um, you know, just learning how to deal with a new baby. And her one point of like, this is the one thing that makes this ice planet livable is my husband or my, my mate who, you know, it has been there for me since the minute I crash landed here. And now he doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know who his baby is. Um, and at the meantime, because their cave system has crashed or like caved in, they're having to find a new place to live. And so there's this big trek across the mountains to this new area that they're going to inhabit. And, um, as far as Ice Planet Barbarian books go, this is one of the most emotional ones because you have that. I know some people have said they find Stacy to be whiny because she just wants her husband back. But it, let's be honest, we'd all do that. We would want our husband to remember us and our baby. So my next book is called Dirty Reckless Love by Lexi Ryan. And this is about Levi and Ellie. Ellie wakes up in the hospital and she is told by the doctors that she's lucky they found her the paramedics because she was beaten so badly she almost died she does not remember the last several years of her life and she's now faced with the fact that she was living with a guy who has a drug addiction who she is being told beat the crap out of her and left her to die and she doesn't remember him and she talks like she goes home to her mom and her sister and she basically is just like what the heck happened to my life like how did this end up being my life and some people try and come and visit her but her mom keeps shooing them away and she's scared because like she was with a drug dealer a drug addict and she's like what like oh my gosh well eventually the friends who came to visit her she decides like she overhears them talking to her mom and she's like hold on i want to talk to them and one of them is levi levi is colton her boyfriend who supposedly beat her to death um it's his best friend levi is so levi tries to talk to her a little bit but here's the thing levi and her have been very flirty with each other and she was kind of falling for him, but she felt like she was with Colton. And so things just get very, very messy because she doesn't know what to believe. All right. So my next one is Twisted Obsession by S. Mastery. This is the fourth book in her Hockey God series. Can you hear the Husky? If anybody can hear it, the Husky is having a conversation in the hallway with one of the kids. Anyhow, so this is Twisted Obsession by S. Mastery. This is or the fourth book in her Hockey God series. And maybe, maybe yeah. Kenley has some thoughts on this book that she's trying maybe to share. She does. Maybe she does. I was listening to it on audio. She might have heard part of it. I, I'm telling you. 
So, um, so this is uh, about Jake or Jacob and Melody. And so Melody is our heroine who has lost, she's got amnesia. But when Jake, he's now playing for the NHL, but when he was in college, she was his professor and they had a relationship. And all of a sudden she disappeared. She's been missing for two years and he's been looking for her and trying to find her because he's obsessive because these guys are absolutely obsessive and crazy about their women. And so he's been trying to find her and figure out what happened to her. And then one day he uh, is playing hockey and he looks up and she is in the stands with this other guy sitting next to her. And he's like, where has she been? And when he confronts her, she does not know who he is. Or he sends his friend to go get her actually to bring her to him. And she doesn't know who the friend is when the friend was one of her students as well. And she has lost everything in her memories. Like she doesn't know what her favorite drink is. She doesn't know what her favorite scent is. She doesn't know what color lipstick she used to wear. Cause she used to always wear this red lipstick. She doesn't know those kinds of things. Cause he talks about how she's wearing a pink color and it just doesn't look right on her because it's not who she was before. And so he decides that he is going to take this whole situation. <laughs> She's, she loves this book. She's going to take this whole situation and he is going to use it to his benefit. He is going to bring her in. He is going to manipulate the things, like the things in her life so that she has to rely on him. And he knows stuff about her that nobody else seems to know because they could only find a cousin when she was in the hospital. And not only has she hit her head in the car accident, but her throat was slit. So somebody wants her dead. And um, there's also a husband out there somewhere. And he's wondering where he, you know, Jake's wondering where the husband went to. So there's quite a bit of mystery here. Loved it. I would say you can read this as a standalone. I think you could. Um, I personally think that you get so much more out of it if you read all four books. They are all on audio. Teddy Hamilton does do the male narration for it. Totally worth it um, for all four. I think it was all four. I know he did the last two. I'm pretty sure he does all four. And, uh, you see these characters throughout the books, like they pop in, like they, they, the each book ends, you know, and ends that that relationships story. Um, but we do see those characters show up in the other people's books, and the book just before this one it sets up this book in a way. So all of them do that; they set up the next book. So I would recommend reading all of them, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so Jessica. We're going to do bonus rec time. Bonus rec! <laughs> so we each have a bonus recommendation. So today you are getting 12 of the best amnesia books we've ever read. Mm -hmm. Instead of the 10. Because we just couldn't decide. There were just too many. No, I was really struggling. Yeah. So Okay. Okay. Bonus rec. So my bonus rec for you is Unravel Me by Kendall Ryan. Now, this is a shorter book, and so I will be totally upfront. I would have loved for this to be longer, but I still really enjoyed this. This is about Ashlyn and L Logan, because we don't really know. Ashlyn is a psychology student, and she's working on her thesis about amnesia. And she gets a phone call that there is a guy being held at the hospital who she can go interview and he's being held at the hospital because he was found with a bunch i think it was a, a guy's uh, he was all bloody and a bunch of stuff was there and there was a deceased man and he was there and so they believe that he must have committed the crime because he was bloody and all of this so they're holding him in the hospital but he has amnesia he has no recollection of the event he has no idea who he even is so she goes to the hospital to visit him not visit but to like interview him and for her thesis and while she's talking to him she just really doesn't believe that he could have committed this crime he just doesn't seem like that type of person and she starts to kind of form you know an attraction attachment with him and the book goes really quick we don't get to see how that really develops and i would have loved to have seen that we just kind of escalate to like she starts visiting him all the time and this is where that goes he has no idea who he is he could be married he could have a wife he could have kids he could be a murderer we don't know he knows nothing about himself and she's falling for him mm-hmm all right really enjoyed it but i would have loved to have seen it be longer and really dive into the development of those characters mm -hmm. and their relationship 
I get that quite a lot when I read novellas that I'm really loving or shorter books that I'm really loving. Well, I, 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 I might have called it a novella and I probably shouldn't have. I think it was like, t- it was think, over 200 pages. I think you just, I think you said it was a shorter read. Okay. I don't think you called it a novella. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then for my bonus rec, we have Forget Me Not by QB Tyler. So this is about Olivia and Bennett. So Olivia and Bennett uh, are going through a divorce and they've been dealing with some really hard things as a couple. Um, Bennett actually cheated on her and that is why part of the reason why they're getting a divorce. And so they're not living together or anything when the book starts out. They're in the process of this happening. And she gets a phone call. Libby gets a phone call from their mutual friend who is a neurologist who works at the hospital. And Bennett has been in a car accident. So she goes to the hospital because he is her husband still. She does love him. They've been together since they were, um, I think, early college. They've been together for quite a while. And so she goes to the hospital. When he wakes up after being in this car accident, he has forgotten the last three years. And so he doesn't know that their marriage it has ended. He doesn't know that he'd had an affair. He doesn't understand why it had fallen apart because as far as he can remember, they're happy and they're very happy and in love. And so she um, starts to take care of him to help him try to remember who he is. Um, but this is ultimately their story. And they have to work through all of their issues together in order to, you know, move on with this this situation but how do you get past that he cheated on her all right guys <laughs> see i forgot i forgot that that's what we have for amnesia rex for you guys we're done that's it yay okay <laughs> make sure you well first of all leave us a comment do you like the amnesia trope if you do what are some of your favorites that you've read? Tell us all the bookish things in the comments. Make sure to check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. And then also on Wednesday, that's a new day of the week, on Wednesdays. <laughs> through the end of the year, we do have our Romance 101 school. So you'll want to check that out as well. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.